Before the pod gets started, go ahead and leave us a rating on Spotify, Apple Music or wherever else you listen to the pod. Thank you. Hello everybody and welcome back to the Yellow Squared podcast. Uh, it's of course myself, Ned, and I'm joined by my brother James. Welcome back to the pod, mate. How are you doing? I'm very good, mate. Yeah, not too bad. i um, feeling... Much more positive about things. How are you? Yeah, I think that is uh, that is the chat of the, the day, really, isn't it? We are much more positive about Watford. Seven points from a possible nine this week. And I think everyone's a bit more yep. positive about Watford this week compared to even last week uh, when we were discussing the 1-0 win over Sheffield Wednesday. So I think, James, we'll, uh, we'll start the pod by getting the elephant out of the room and uh, talking about the Mammoth win away at Swansea, the first away win in 295 days following the 1-0 win over Norwich in uh, in January. So, James, mm. I didn't watch the game. I was working. Any topics, any discussions apart from Semmer's absolute rocket, which sealed the three points for wow, the Mammoth? All hail King Ken, mate, yeah. Of course. Um, what a guy. Uh he summed it up, didn't he, in his in his post match um, uh, post match interview? I think it was with the club. I, th- I think it was with the club. Yeah. I, you know, he just said he just felt happy, right? Yeah. Um, and to be honest, we won't spend too long uh, on on this result uh, because it was a pe- pretty scrappy game, to be honest. Uh, but I think w- what it really showed from from Watford's perspective was um, just the. It really showed the togetherness. It showed the the discipline and the determination in the side. Mm. I think it really showed where the leadership is in the team. And it's for me, it's starting to cement who that first choice um, starting eleven uh, really is. Mm. And uh, yeah, Aspria and Seymour came off the bench and they made the difference on the day. Um, we do have to say that we probably got lucky. Um, Swansea scoring a goal from from a corner, which was ruled out for a foul. Um, I'm still struggling to see where the foul was. Apparently, Kembe was pushed off the ball or something like that. But yeah, I think it's been held. Yeah, so it's a bit of a tough one. But uh, we'll come back to that, I guess, um, and we'll talk about referees in a bit, I imagine. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, good solid discipline performance. We bided our time, waited for the opportunity. And um, and Ken thumped it into the roof of the net. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that was a real nice feeling. And then we defended really well. And there were some good saves from Backman towards the end. Mm. And it just, it really did just show um, how together the squad was. And I think you saw that with the, the reaction of the players after the game, the reaction of the players running off the bench to celebrate with, with Ken. Um, and it just felt real, it just, for me, it's, it, it gave a real nice sort of warm feeling um, that there was some life behind the scenes and, and that there there was a team there. And um, I'm just delighted that, that we got the win and, and the clean sheet. Yeah, for sure. And it was two clean sheets in a row. And for what it was, yeah. Clean sheet is a bit, it's a bit of a rarity, really, isn't it? We tend to, to concede at least one in a game. Um, it does feel like that, doesn't it? So two clean sheets in a row is a bit of a rarity. But, you know, we, none of us were complaining. I think we can both agree that uh, the, bo- the games were fairly scrappy. Obviously, we, we spoke about Sheffield Wednesday being a bit, of a bit of a poor performance up until about 60 minutes in. Then we decided to, to try. Yeah. Um, and then, obviously, Swansea, like you say, a bit scrappy. Um, I think we could almost have scored another goal late into the game after... After Ken's goal, but just, we did have a lot of chances to be fair. Yeah, yeah, just that last final ball. I think the final ball is what we've spoken about so often, isn't it? Um, yeah. But yeah, two two clean sheets, and then we we're heading into the Millwall game, and it's all of a sudden like you know what, we could get nine points from nine in in the space of a week. Yeah. And um, a lot of confidence. Yeah, I think, and that confidence was absolutely flowing in the first half. That's probably the best first half of football I've I've seen Watford playing in a long while. Uh, obviously, apart from Very much so. apart from QPR, but I I didn't watch that. So um, for me personally, the Millwall first half was was absolutely electric. Apart from obviously conceding a relatively poor goal, I think it's completely avoidable. Yeah. Um, 
But I mean, you you were pretty um, you were pretty vocal on on defending uh, off off offline. Um, that mm. you want to talk about what 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 did you think was the problem with our defensive performance this weekend? Well, I think we just really struggle with defending crosses into the box and mm. and set pieces, and I think it's because we obviously try to implement the sort of zonal marking system which literally every professional club in England uses now and I think when when we zonal mark we do it really badly I feel like there's not enough communication in the back line for for zonal marking to work properly um I think you know if we're marking man to man in these scenarios there's never going to be a free header for someone is there Obviously, with zonal marking, you're stuck in your zone, and if a man floats through, you pass him on, right? So yeah, the communication yeah. has to be better. I think that's that's the main the main thing because we're obviously we're never going to change from doing zonal marking because every pro is just conditioned to doing that now, but yeah. that has to improve. Otherwise, we're going to concede so many more goals from crosses and and set pieces, and it's just going to be a, a really frustrating. Uh, I mean, it's going to be targeted now, isn't yeah, it? For sure. And yeah, the uh, the other point of that is I don't particularly know what Backman's role is in the the sort of zonal marking system. Whether he's told to stay close to his line or come and claim the ball, I don't know. But certainly for the second goal yesterday, it he comes he almost comes to claim the ball, then decides not to, um, and he's. Obviously, then he's off balance. He's coming forward, and then his momentum's going back, and then he's looking to kind of predict where Harding is going to head the ball. So he's diving mm. one way, and literally, where's Harding? Hedge the ball, a free header, by the way, in the six-yard box, down straight down into the ground in the m- middle of the goal, and it's just. Yeah. And at that point, I was a bit like, you know what? That is completely undeserved to be to be 2-1 down in this game because I thought we'd actually played really well. But yeah. then again, it, it's football. Like, two poor decisions defensively and you're 2-1 you're down because you're going to get punished. And we, we said this yeah. before, if teams start taking their chances against us, we would, we would you know, we concede a lot more goals. Um, but yeah, did, did you hmm. notice anything about, about the defence? Obviously, with Batman and and this sort of zonal no, marking thing. Pretty much everything that you just said there, mate. I think I think what I find frustrating is um, we. I don't think we're a particularly small team. You know, Hoot and and Sierra oh. Alta and Livermore. You know, they're they're big, tall guys. You know, we shouldn't be being dominated as much as we are in those um, in those positions. Yeah. But it just seems to be that you know that that's what happens. Um, I mean, when you when you when you see the Harding goal. Yesterday, Sierrauta's just stood there, and um, Harding's just run in front of him. It's such an obviously sort of run from deep. He's run into an area where the ball's going to go to. Don't get me wrong; it's a great delivery. Um, oh yeah. But it, but may uh, not too much more to add, other than it just felt predictable. You know, watching on watching on Hive Live yesterday, when they scored it, I just thought, of course, it was going to happen. Mm. Um, and it, it was just disappointing. Um, so yeah, it's a big problem for for me the defensive situation, and whether or not it's solved by better players, a new system, or better coaching. It, it's 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 hard to say. But I suspect that because of how the budget has been managed in the side this summer, we're not getting any new players. Um, so yeah, not not much more on that. Mate, no. No, and uh, yeah, I think the, uh, the the budget and and the squad does have a bit of an impact uh, on just the squad. Obviously, the squad in general, but uh, like you said, the budget's not really going to bend for a lot in in January. I, no. I don't think so. I think we kind of just have to deal with what we we've got at the moment, um, and just mm. until the summer, and we can maybe sell some assets uh from the squad potentially or you know find some money from somewhere 
Um, mm. Hopefully not Moji Bayat's back pocket, though, because we haven't <laughs> got a clear where that money's coming from. But, yeah, I think we kind of have to work with what we've got. And I think the main the main problem is there's there must be some sort of lack of communication where a player like Harding, who is experienced, he, he, you know he's going to do, you know, you know he knows what he's doing, and you knew something like that was going to come. Just a, a plain run from deep, right? Like you said, I think yeah. the, the communication has to improve. Mm. That's that, that's the main point from me. Yeah. Um. So, we uh we've started with um different midfielders than than we would usually expect. Obviously, uh, Deli yeah. Bashiru was absent with an illness or something this week. Um. Yeah. So that has been really late. Yeah. Yeah. It has been actually, but it um. So we started with Kone and Kembe and Livermore in mm. midfield. Yeah. And on paper, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're looking at that midfield and going, really? But I think that was one of the most complete performances from the midfield that uh, yep. that I've seen this this season, really, and and including last season as well, up until. They uh, up until Val made the subs, but we'll we'll get into that in a little bit. Yeah. Do you think uh, that KMB obviously KMB's splits opinions massively, right? Uh, among, yeah. Among what I'm fans. not sure why, but yeah. Do you think he he starts now? Yeah, I do. I I I think that um, if you if if Livermore is going to sit and you've got Kone and KMB, the energy, um, and the press that those two give. Yeah, yeah. With ball with ball playing. You know, ability. Kembe is more limited than Kone, but Kembe is able to 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 turn, get out of tight spots, and, oh, and lay yeah, the ball off. Sure. You know, um, for for me now, that is that is the the starting eleven, um, because of of how they set the uh, the tempo in midfield uh, and mm. and how they bring the ball forward. Uh, yeah, lo- lots of people are saying that's Kembe's be- best performance for Watford, and I would completely agree with that one um i think kone is growing as a player as well and he looked much more comfortable sort of taking the ball on the half turn and bringing it forward and and livermore um he just he just feels like a bit of a calm head yes he's limited in what he can do in some places but i just he, his positioning for me looks good mm-hmm. and it looks better than if you put kmb in that position it looks better than if you put Alta in that position um he just feels like he's got up to match fitness. So I think it's nicely balanced at the moment. Mm. Um, and it just allows the team to, to press high and force the issues, which which we did yesterday. And there was, you know, I lost count of the amount of times where we were winning the ball back in, in sort of Millwall's final third, really, yeah, if yeah. that makes sense. Um, and we were just keeping that pressure on. And, and eventually chances come from from, from that. So, yeah, mate, mate, I was really happy with it, really pleased with it. And, um, I, you know, I... Re- I you know, I we did start with a, a bit of a negative um, in terms of the defending, but you know, uh, for the listeners behind the scenes cut here, we wanted to get that out of the way early. Um, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. but that's part now because generally, um, I I really enjoyed watching uh, Watford yesterday and enjoyed the the, the game, um, which is pretty much what we were saying in last week's pod when we're talking about people just not particularly enjoying going to watch Watford at the moment, yeah, which yeah. might be why the the ground's emptying a little bit. Yeah. If we play like that, and if we get 90 minutes of that, number one, we'll win more than we lose. And number two, when we do lose, it'll be entertaining. And we've got something that we can talk about. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, mate, it, long-winded answer to go back to your original question. I think that's the that's the midfield three now. Um, and that says a, a little bit about in man loser, I suspect. Yeah, I think the uh, the Livermore argument, obviously, he's limited, right? But um, yeah, I genuinely could not think of a time yesterday where he gave the ball away. I think he's so calm on the ball. He, he's so experienced. He knows what he's doing. He genuinely, mm. he's so level-headed. The ball will come back to him, little turn away from the, the attacker, lay the ball off. He doesn't want to do too much, which is absolutely the right thing to do. You're at the base of midfield. You're dictating the tempo of the game, really. You, yeah, yeah. You're dictating the, the tempo of the attack. You're breaking things up, you know, but he does it really well. And something I noticed against Sheffield Wednesday was the way he he leads the group. And I think he did that again yesterday. 
you know, <laughs> it's not a shock that when he started, we we've gained points. Mm-hmm. To be honest, I think he's he's so calm, and uh, yeah, he's he's really proving a lot of haters wrong, in in my opinion. <laughs> He's got seven caps for England, so I think he has a decent idea about how football's how football is played. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. He, his footballing brain and intelligence is 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 good, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. and I love what you said there, by the way, mate. You mentioned about um how much sort of his leadership abilities and leadership credentials are coming to the fore now. Loads of people talking about when we when uh ken scored against swansea how he just sank to his knees you can see how much that it kind of means to him that it's it's sort of delivering and Mm. um and you know when the team works hard and gets the results it it really matters to him so you know that that's really really nice to see especially for someone who's coming to the end of his career um you know he, he he's not a, he's not a fan of the club necessarily. So to see how much it, it matters to him that yeah. that the team does well is is really nice to see, and that'll only rub off on on the players, right? And I for me how also we said about Kone, mm. sometimes being a little bit raw. Yeah, yeah. How much experience and knowledge is he going to get off playing alongside Jake Livermore? Oh, so um, that can only be good for him, right? So so, so yeah. Yeah, real pleasing. Yeah, I think that kind of reflects how the squad is reacting to Ishmael at the moment. Because yeah. I think if they're believing in the philosophy, they are going to give everything and it's going to mean something to them when it plays off, right? So yeah, for for Livermore to sort of sink to his knees when, when Summer scores the way at Swansea, it just it shows that, you know, he's fully he's fully there and he he's willing to do anything to, to get the three points for, for Val and it's yeah, it's really really pleasing. It shows a definite togetherness in, in the squad. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's, speaking of that more settled midfield, I did want to mention um, the uh, the substitutions in. Uh, yeah, go for it. And to be honest, I think Ishmael got those subs wrong. I. Uh, yeah, agreed. I think substitutions are ne- a necessity for sure, and uh, I appreciate we we they get sort of certain blocks right that you can. Um, have so many subs going on uh, at once, mm-hmm. right? So, yeah, I appreciate that there's certain timings, and he's got to he's got to sort of balance it up, right? But I honestly think that bringing on loser just sort of disrupted the flow in the midfield, and it's no surprise when we brought on three different substitutions that we completely lost the grip we had on Millwall. And yeah, for about ten minutes, it was Millwall's game, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, and we we definitely had to weather that storm. And to be fair, we definitely did weather the storm well, and yeah, we got through it. And then we started to get back on top. But I think making three subs at once is too much of a disruption to the team. Yeah, Especially... it's been spoken about a lot, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Now, this this seems to be Ismail's sort of mo, as it were, that he likes to chuck people on on the hour mark. Um, and quite a few times it's it's come back to, to haunt us, really, hasn't it? Yeah, but uh, it's such a difficult one with Loser, isn't it? And we've spoken about him bef- before on the pod. <laughs> yeah. There's <It's> <laughs> such yeah. a good player in there. I just, I really just worry for him that he's, he's completely, he's completely shot of confidence. He's, Mm. On his day, he could be one of the best players in the entire championship, and this, he's obviously—it's so apparent to me—he's trying to force everything. He's really just—he's trying to get something to come off. He's trying to create something, and I believe he got an assist yesterday for right. He did. Yeah. Well, this is what I was—I was—I was, I was going to come back to this point. Yeah, looking at looking at who was who came on and and who had an impact on the game. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But I think. He's yeah, he's trying to force it, and it kind of disrupted the uh, the midfield. I I thought, um, because mm-hmm. the, yeah, it's just the, that the three that started in the field worked so well together. It sort of just yeah, it, the switch up was so so different, right? Because um, loser adds something totally different to what Kone and what what Kembe adds, right? So yeah, I feel like. They're they they've got the legs. They're they're pressed. They're aggressive. They're high intensity. They win the ball back. 
Whereas Luzu will get the ball and create something. But at the moment, he's obviously forcing it too much, which uh, leads to the ball being given away far too often. And and I think he's he's just probably very frustrated with himself and frustrated that it's not coming off. But, you know, like, I mean, having said all that, ultimately he does go and get an assist. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so, yeah so I mean, if, if, if you're looking for someone to create something, then that's that's kind of what you want. I I think the thing I think that the logic behind the substitutions was just how much effort those 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 individuals would put in in that sixty in the first sixty minutes yeah. with the high intensity. Um, it just felt like it might have been fading, and Coney did seem to start to drift out of the game a little bit. Yeah. Um, but um, but yeah, it still it still was was disruptive for three to come on at once. You could maybe phase it out a little bit. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I don't think Aspria was that tired. No, no. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Playing out wide, so you know you could you could I could understand maybe Kone and Bio coming off. Mm, yeah. Then wait five ten minutes, then do Martins um, Martins and Ince maybe. Uh, and then you you had that Ryovich one at the end, but uh, sorry, not uh, Healy coming on at the end. But yeah, it does disrupt it, um, and I think I think that did affect uh, us on the day. Yeah, yeah, I can agree. And I, I think it's it's funny, isn't it, when we brought on Healy, he sort of had his Posetto moment against Spurs. Yeah, didn't <laughs> clearing yeah. The, clearing the head on the bar, which, which is unbelievable, by the way. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> which also, oh, 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 well, yeah. Which was a was which was a foul on um who oh, I'm going to yeah, call it out sure. then yeah, there, yeah. but uh, well, I'll hold off on on Mr. Stroud in a minute. Yet. We're not going to get there yet. Uh, yeah. So yeah, fair play to him for coming on and 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 showing the determination to try and to try and make that header and and keep the keep the team in the game because it worked, right? Yeah. Went oh, at the other yeah, end. Oh, scored. Yeah. yeah. Just I just wanted to touch on Brajevic quickly because obviously now he's on four goals for the season. And, uh, yes, <laughs> we're sitting here sort of thinking like, you know what? He's he's not he's not great, but put the ball in the yeah. box and he'll he'll score more often than not. And um, I like Bio. Yeah. I really like his link up play. I like the way he gets about the pitch and he runs a lot and yep. he does yep. a lot of work for the team. When yep. in reality, he didn't actually have that many chances yesterday. Really, he had one header which went. Just over onto the roof of the net. Um, yeah, nothing came to him yesterday, nothing, did it? Nothing really came to him. No, you're right, and it's difficult for a striker to do stuff with no, with not, no real service, as in chances being mm. given to him. Because obviously we were playing mm. well yesterday, but it was majority coming from both the wide players, and um, and yeah, but I think maybe there's got to be some sort of system where Ryovic and bio maybe play together up front rather than one being swapped for the other um yeah i th i think so um whether because i, I don't think ryovic can i just don't think ryovic can do it no no i think you're right i think ryovic will score chances if they come to him in the box but if you want a team that presses and and works together ryovic can't do it no i'm, I'm afraid I think... and that's where bio can, yeah, can yeah. deliver yeah I think Ryovic could get better when he, yeah. he. I think he's still adjusting to the speed of the championship, but um, yeah. I, I, I think maybe there's a there's a there's an argument for both of them to be playing up front together. Maybe Ryovic winning headers and flicking them onto Bio to. to I think Ryovic goals. wins headers, mate. <laughs> well, you know he's got to do something if they're playing up front together. Um, yeah. But yeah. Ultimately, he scored, so that's good for him. Another good, he did, good yes. goal for him yeah. to, to have more confidence. Um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, I, there's a couple more points just uh, before yeah. we we hit the uh, the KS moment. Um, yeah. But yeah. Um, so fullbacks, right? I think a mm. lot of people are starting to to see that Ngakia is pulling a little bit of form together. He's by yeah. no means the perfect player, and there are still several moments of game where I'm, my head, my head's sort of in my hands while watching him. But he's definitely growing as a player. He's doing, he's doing a lot for the team. He's very solid defensively. Very solid, yeah. Obviously, Andrews is going to be coming back from suspension 
next uh, next week uh, uh, against Huddersfield. Do you think Andrews goes back into the side? For me, no, and I don't think um, Ishmael would do that either, uh, because I think um, Ngaki is the the guy in form, and he's playing well, and he's doing what Ishmael wants in the system. Um, yes, his end product is is a bit of a is has has question marks about it, but um, you know, he he looks confident at the moment, and I think you have to reward that. Um, so until he has a bad game now, I think he starts over Andrews. Um, just, just, I think because he's, he's of his sort of physical physicality and defensive, um, um, strengths, um, over Andrews at, at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's a bit more of a, a complete player in, uh, in Ngakia at the moment. I think Andrews is at the moment, yeah, at the moment, Andrews yeah. has got a, a a higher ceiling um yes in terms of his talent and what he can become but uh yeah i think yeah i think it also it would also be a bit strange for val to just sort of bring andrew straight back in obviously he's got a straight red and then it's furthered by saying something to the referee which is just absolutely yeah. stupid so i think yeah. whilst he's served the 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 fa ban there's got to be some sort of uh, repercussion in in the actual club itself, which I I think maybe not starting for for a few weeks, right? Because ultimately he's a young player. He wants to play every week. He wants to maybe secure a move to a, to a bigger club at the end of the season or at the end of next season. Mm-hmm. So he's going to be one of playing. So I uh, I think that the ultimate loss for him is that. That could lead to him staying out of the starting eleven for for a little while, with uh, with Ngaki being yeah. in some some decent form. Uh, yeah, it's professional football, isn't it? Yeah, at the end yeah. of the day, uh, it's not. It was always an opportunity for Ngaki to to sort of cement a place, and at the moment he's doing it. So you know, all credit to him. Yeah, and uh, speaking of uh, of fullbacks hitting some form, I think yeah. we can't. Well, it can't go unnoticed that. Um, that Lewis is hitting hitting some form. I think he played yeah. fantastically well yesterday. He worked so yeah. well with Semmer. Um, yeah, that was good to watch, whether, wasn't it? Whether that's just because Val has decided to finally play wingers that are that, that footed on the right <laughs> side. Um, but, oh, goodness me, the, the, the right back from Millwall, McNamara, had a torrid afternoon with, uh, with Lewis and Semmer up against yeah. him. In that first half, goodness yeah. me, the amount of fouls that he gave away. You could tell he was getting frustrated and and uh, that's yeah. brilliant. Yeah, that's exactly what it reminded to. it reminded me of the battles of days gone of Ismail Assar versus Max Ahrens at Norwich. Yeah. Yeah. Uh you know, just uh, he, the, whatever that McNamara could he couldn't he just couldn't deal with what was going at him, could he? No. And there were fouls and they'd just been pulled out of position all over the shop. Yeah. But, um yeah, so yeah, mate, really pleased for Lewis. And whilst he can't take a throw in, um, he does look like he's he does look like he's uh, he's starting to be that player that we thought we were getting. Because I must admit, first five six games that we saw of him, I was less than convinced. But uh, against Swansea, and again today, he looked much more comfortable uh, and much more up to speed. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I think I was a bit more positive about. Lewis and a lot of people were when he when he first you know was playing for Watford I I thought mm. there was definitely a player in there there was there was signs of of something good um but then he sort of faded a little bit but I'm so glad that he's he's coming back he's starting to hit form obviously he's fit now so that's brilliant for us and I think he can he can only get better really as uh, as this Watford team grows in confidence unless that you know, dramatically changes. I think mm. he will, you know, continue to grow in confidence and become that player that we are. You know, we were absolutely call- calling out for him, and that's why we signed him, right? I think so. Yeah, and 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 the one thing that I would say about Lewis is that what a lot of people sort of on sort of Watford Twitter and and sort of the Watford content world uh, were talking about. I think it was a Watford Buzz podcast that were talking about it. I think it's easy to forget that Lewis actually hasn't played a lot of football in sort of the last two years. No. Um, even 
you know, he went to Newcastle, he got that, that move. He wasn't in their squad after January last year. Um, he had a couple of injuries. So he's not played a lot of football. So it was always going to take a little bit of time of regular football to get up to speed. And, and it looks like um, that's starting to, to come out now. So, yeah, yeah that's, that's really nice to see. Yeah, it is, it's definitely nice to see, isn't it? Um, yeah, just another another quick point, James. Obviously, mm. Seralta and Hoop were in the partnership yesterday. Um, so yeah. while while Hoop is uh, currently on four yellow cards and is one yellow away from from a suspension, I yes. I personally think that Hoot and Seralta should start as the centre back partnership. And uh-huh. I don't think Porteous gets back into the starting eleven at the moment. Uh, what What do you think about that? Oh, uh, I I'm going to say that I if we'd have won yesterday, uh, I would have agreed with you. If we hadn't have spent five minutes at the start of this podcast talking about how bad we were defensively, mm. um. So, but, and hear me out on this one, because we know what Portis's sort of weaknesses are in terms of playing out from the back. Yeah. We know that Portis will throw himself at everything that comes into the box. Yeah. Um, so it, it's a difficult one. I, can I just, well, now I'm going to have to say something. I, I think, I think um, there might be a case to see out of Portis and who steps out. Yeah. And I think that yeah. might be the suspension. So That's what I'm going to do, mate, is I'm going to say, no, let's see Sierra Alter and Hoot against Huddersfield. Let Hoot get a yellow, and then we'll let um, Porteous and Sierra Alter start against Rotherham. Yeah, because I think Sierra Alter is very good with his ball, with, with the ball at his feet, and I think definitely training as a DN over the summer has uh, has helped that, but no end, right? Um, yeah. And obviously, he's a, he's a... and it was noticeable, wasn't it? Mm. It was noticeable when 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 Watford were playing out yesterday. Sir is much crisper with his passes across the across the pitch, isn't he? Yeah. Um, it just keeps the tempo going. So I'd agree with you there. Yeah, I think it's it's interesting, isn't it? That <laughs> I don't know what you felt, but I didn't really feel like we'd give the ball away um, that much no. in the back yesterday, and that was including Backman. To be fair to him. Um, but yeah, definitely when Hoot and Porteous are together, I feel like something is bound to go wrong at some point. So yeah, I, mm. I'd like to see um, I'd like to see Porteous and Serata together, but for now I'm I'm gonna have to stick with my uh, my original point and say maybe Hoot and Serata could uh, continue staying together uh, as the defensive partnership. I like it. I'm happy with yeah, that. Yeah, I'll let you have that one. So, uh, James, quickly before we uh, move on to the next four games, um, yes, I've got to uh, bring in the sort of the Keith Stroud alert. <laughs> yeah, was that a trigger warning? Uh, it definitely um, it will be for Watford fans. Yeah. Oh my goodness! I just. I don't understand. Yeah, I, I know people immediately sort of point to that he's a sort of he's a known Luton fan. Why is he being allowed to referee uh, Watford it. games? I don't understand it. But I also just I also just don't think he's a very good referee. If I'm being honest, I just don't. You know, they were talking about him. He's he's miles ahead of the rest of the the EFL refs in terms of yellow cards given. Um, I I felt like a lot of his decisions were questionable yesterday. Mm. Um. It was inconsistent all over the pitch. And I know I've spoken about this on previous pods, but I really don't understand how you can have only six minutes time added on at the end of that game when you had Sir Alta down getting stitches in his head for about four minutes. (laughs) You had a full set of substitutions. You had two goals plus a myriad of other times balls off the pitch. He just six minutes the, the 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 football league has stepped away from their um from their stated rule changes uh at the start of the season and it's just so disappointing for the fans um to, to kind of see that because yes if it was a turgid nil nil game and they said oh you know 11 minutes added on you'd be like okay fine <laughs> but when we were actually back on the ascendancy you know Adding the right amount of added time on, as per the EFL rules, 
gives us hope that we can keep going because effectively six minutes meant that we really were only going to maybe muster one more chance after we equalized yeah um but yeah uh, i just i i i don't i don't like him as a referee i don't think he's very good no. uh and i just spent most of the second half getting angry at, at, at him and, and the decisions he was making both for us and against us i'm not gonna lie you know we we had some weird fouls given for yeah, us yeah uh, but it did feel like there was stuff that was myth, um, and yeah, I just, I just, I just don't like him at all as a referee. And as he's a Luton fan, and um, that that feels like it can't be right because if fans are talking about it, then it's a problem. It might not, we not might not be right to say that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah. but the fact is that fans are talking about it. Um, it was the same thing with um, oh, I've forgotten. Mike Dean, Mike Dean, because he was a Tranmere fan, Liverpool area, and he would, would get the same stick thrown at him for Manchester games, right? Mm. Um, so I think I think the EFL and um, need to do better at who they assign referees to because it just causes tension and friction. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's my two pence worth on Keith Stroud. Um, I don't like him. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I don't want to add too much to that because <laughs> I'm not here to join the uh, the Keith Stroud hate club. But I just couldn't believe the yellow card that he gave to Semi yesterday. It was just so bizarre. I didn't see anything, and then it's just sort. He's, he's walking up to Semi, gives him a yellow card, which you can only assume is for something like time wasting. And then, well, wow. Why would he time waste? I don't. I just don't understand the the decision. And then he goes and then spends another two minutes speaking to people in the box. I just it's yeah. bizarre. So I think that actually what happened was it wasn't for time wasting. So apparently Semmer, uh, just uh, gestured that um the Bialkowski should have got a yellow card for kicking a second ball onto the pitch. Oh right, right. right. Uh, that makes it more which. Sense. Which makes more sense, but then it also begs the question of, all right, so if Semmer is, if you're acknowledging that something has happened, yeah, why isn't Balkowski then also getting a yellow card for doing what he did? No, yeah, because it was right in front of the assistant referee. Yeah. So, so it's it's this. It all comes back to the same inconsistency problem, doesn't it? Mm. it it's a complete farce, and it just proves right. You know, referees will wait all game, and then they'll give the yellow cards at the end of the game because they don't want it to affect the outcome of the match. Yeah, and that does my head in, to be honest. I think if it's yeah. if it's in a yellow card offence, then give the yellow card. It doesn't matter what stage of the game it is. You know what I mean? Like absolutely. If, even yeah. if it's after a minute, I think. Uh, yeah. Uh, Dad was uh, sort of telling me yesterday um, about um, <laughs> a Vinnie Jones incident where he got a yellow card in the first four seconds of a game because Golly. the the game started and he just ran and threw himself at a player. He didn't. He, he, <laughs> I don't think he had the ball or anything, but it kind of just shows right that if the, if there's a foul that's taking place that is deserved of a yellow card, you shouldn't be. You know, you shouldn't be waiting until the 80th minute to start giving that as yellow card. And I yeah, agree yeah. that they they've kind of the EFL have stepped away from that whole yellow carding, time wasting, and and doing that. Yeah, uh, I yeah. think it's quite disappointing because from the from the start of the season that seemed like a, a sensible idea. You know, it stops people from from yeah. time wasting from like the 50th minute when you're playing away from home and it. And it's so frustrating. They they should be getting comes... cards because it's a it's a deterrent, isn't it? No one else is gonna yeah time waste if you're guaranteed to get a yellow card or worse. But not not to turn this into like a a wider football uh, pod, <laughs> heaven forbid. But um, what, what this actually comes back to communication, right? Because if if the if the EFL or the PGMOL or whoever it is turned around and said actually do you know what it was ridiculous that we were giving 15 20 minutes of added time every at the end of every game um so actually we're going to dial it back a bit because we're concerned about players yeah. playing too long etc cetera, etc cetera, and it was wild then that would be fine but the, the thing is they haven't come out and said oh yeah we got that wrong so so that's why i said when when i first got on this rant you know the the, the supposed rules because they're still in place 
no one said that they're not a thing, right? No one has told anybody that anything has changed. So you all you're doing is creating a conversation that if they manage it properly, wouldn't be in place. Um, and that goes across all levels of football. Mm. Um, and that's kind of the biggest communication from from the FA, EFL, Premier League to the fans is is terrible. Because you see that with VAR at the same time, right? Yeah, yeah. But anyway, this was supposed to be a fun pod because we're, you know, we're doing well and we actually yeah. enjoyed a game yesterday. So <laughs> Keith Stroud, thanks for that. You've ruined it. Yeah, classic, classic, yeah. Uh, <laughs> All about him. So quickly before we end off the pod, James, the next four, I think this yeah. could be a real turning point in the season, to be honest. Huddersfield away, mm. Rotherham at home, Leicester away and Norwich at yeah. home. I'm making a bold call here. You won't hear this any from any other Watford podcast or any other Watford content. We will get ten points. Oh my god! Well, you you are the you are the um, prediction king, right? Well, I suppose so I am, far. I actually got the these three wrong, didn't I? I said we get we. I can't. I said we get five points, and we ended up with seven. So. Oh, uh, that's true. Yeah. I don't that's think true. I was all right, were we? Because you said six. No. Yeah, I said six. I've got seven. Yeah, I, you, I thought we'd go in. I thought though. I say we'd beat Millwall and uh, lose to Swansea I, or something yeah, like that. I so. Oh well, Watford over delivering yet again. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, you think ten? I think ten, 10 points. Yeah. I think we'll draw away. Ah, that's. You're mental. You are. Um, I think. Uh, well, yeah. So, uh, lo- looking at the fixtures, Huddersfield, uh, shipping goals left, right, and centre. Oh. Yeah. No man, it well, yeah, and and they they are sort of in near that being cut adrift at the bottom. Yeah, Rotherham, yeah. they are cut adrift in that bottom uh bottom three. Leicester, cut adrift at the top of the championship, running away with it. And Norwich, who are as inconsistent as we are, so um that all points down to us going and beating Leicester and losing the others. Really, um no, I I think I think yeah, you've got to say. If we can perform the way we did against against Millwall, um, it, or any of well, Millwall and Swansea, to be honest, against those those first two teams, yeah, well, we far I'd like to think six them. points. Yeah, I'd like to think we get six points out of it. Then it's a conversation about form and confidence and how we set up against Leicester. Um, but my uh, my heart says I just think Leicester are just too good for this division well, this season. Yeah. And then Norwich, we've got a good record against Norwich. So yeah, I'm I'm a bit like you, mate. I'm I'm relatively positive about these next next four games. I think we'll be somewhere between. I think we'll be somewhere between eight and eight and ten points. Okay, okay, I, I can I can see that. I can say I think the lowest I would go is probably seven. I think yeah, we'll okay, yeah, I'll, I'll change my and... seven. seven. Potentially, seven, most seven likely lose points. against Leicester and then potentially draw or win against Norwich. But I just, I just think it would be the most Watford thing ever to just either win against Leicester or draw, right? Because Leicester are unbelievable. And I just remember the the season two thousand thirteen fourteen where we were we were pretty average, right? Um, after yeah. after Zola and sort of Leicester and Burnley was, were running away with the with the championship at the top. And we just had a habit of of either winning or drawing against them, and I I hope there is a mm. some kind of uh, of Watford mediocrity that would allow us to get a point away at Leicester just to just to annoy them because it would be brilliant really. Well, well, QPR gave them a bit of a fright yesterday, didn't they? Yeah. So you know they're not infallible. Um, they're just yeah, a very good team. Well, beat them, didn't that they? that's. Yeah, that's all about being disciplined, right? And and, yeah. and being compact um and waiting for the opportunity. And that's that would be the kind of game that you would just for me, I would leave Athbria high up out wide somewhere and uh and just try and get the ball out to him yeah. and uh see see what he can do with it on the counter would be my, my game plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And sort of stick ten men behind the ball and just try and stop them. Okay. Yeah. My concern yeah. for Huddersfield and Rotherham, just to finish off, is that uh, you know they will know how fragile we are from from set pieces. So I suspect mm-hmm. that they're going to play four set pieces. So we have to go out there and score goals early and quickly against against those two teams to kind of yeah. put them away. Yeah. 
Well, uh, well, Rotherham actually picked up three points in the week. Their second win of the season. They're actually playing today mm. against Sheffield Wednesday, which is a real six-pointer. I'd have to, I'd have to say. Um, you got to say Rotherham win that. One. I do have to say Rotherham win that one. Yes, despite the fact that they are currently playing, sort of like a thirty-six-year-old Lee Peltier, a right back at centre back, having currently. I think they had three sort of season-ending injuries last week, so they are not. Oh, that's time. brutal. That's um, tough. And uh, yeah, so hopefully they're even if they win against Sheffield Wednesday and maybe even pick up points next weekend, we're looking at that mm. and thinking we're gonna have too much for that. We will just target either going wide or playing through the middle where they are significantly weakened uh by injuries and yeah hopefully we've got enough i think we definitely have more quality than huddersfield and 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 rotherham i think we will definitely get six points from that and the the, the latter two of norwich and leicester it's, it's a complete lottery isn't it we've got no idea what's gonna happen partly because norwich are as inconsistent as we are so i don't even think yeah. their fans have got a clue what um uh, what's going to happen um, yeah having said that their their form is absolutely awful at the moment i think they've they've lost three and drawn two in their last five so they're not particularly having a good time and then leicester you know what i mean it's just it's it's crazy what having a premier league squad in the championship can do isn't it frightening isn't it yeah. <laughs> 50 million to spend premier league squad um it's a miracle there at the top i don't know how they're doing it i think you've got to you've got to you know, really give a hats off to the manager, haven't you? He's definitely, yeah. he's, he's, uh, he's come and he's steadied a, a sinking ship. And, sinking uh, ship. Kick the ball to Vardy and he'll score. Yeah, yeah. Or just, just give the ball to one of my £30 million pound midfielders and he'll he'll do something. Yeah. I think it's a, a real shock that they're uh, at the top of the championship. Funny. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, yeah, I think that's everything for this week. The uh, Watford women so, mate, yeah. are in action next weekend, so we'll discuss yeah. them in the next pod, as we usually do. Um, nothing else really happened in the Lone Watch, um, apart from Shaq Ford scored midweek. Uh, oh, was it last week? Yeah, weekend? midweek. Yeah. yeah, it was. It was midweek injury time equaliser, wasn't it? Yeah, so that's excellent for him, uh, Burton and. Late Norton actually played each other yesterday uh, in a nil-nil draw. And I was just looking. I don't think Quadro Bar was actually in the squad. So potentially a little injury that has kept him out or maybe illness or something like that. Hopefully nothing too serious for him. Um, but yeah, that was nil-nil. So nothing really happened in that game. Shackford got some more minutes off the bench. So that's really good for, for those two guys. Hopefully they can uh, keep pushing on with that form and uh, mm. getting some more minutes mm. in in the tank, which is all valuable experience, because I don't know about you, James, but I, personally, I'd actually quite like both of them to succeed at Watford in, in the same way that Adiemo and Andrews are, you know, and even James Morrison in, is in that equation of, of players that are kind of succeeding at Watford right now um, in terms of being in and around the first team. So uh, yeah, hopefully they can uh, they can kick on with with that and uh, be a part of the squad next season. So absolutely, mate. Thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to listen to the podcast or watch the podcast if you are watching currently on YouTube. As uh, as I'm sure you all know by now, unless you are new, the podcast goes out early um, at midnight on a, a on a Monday morning. So uh, anyone that is commuting to work or fancies listening to it early can do so then. And then the visual version is, uh, of course, always available on a on a Wednesday evening. Just we just thought we'd uh, get it out as freshly as possible for you guys. Uh, so it's as relevant as possible and you can enjoy um, you know, listening to us waffle about Watford, which is uh, what you're here for. Mm -hmm. right? <laughs> So uh, thank you so much for listening and we'll catch you again very soon. Take care, guys. Thanks, guys.